Hello everyone, this is Jenna Ryan, Self Love You, and I'm back with another audio here today. I want to talk to you about how the narcissist is an insatiable fiend, an insatiable addicted fiend. The narcissist is addicted to narcissistic supply. The narcissist uses other people as fuel sources and goes through them like paper towels. And it's very interesting because those of you who have been following me for years know that I'm very um, well versed in this topic, but I happened to get into a relationship with the narcissist and immediately popped out of it as soon as I found out what I was dealing with. And, um, and I think it happened for a reason because it gave me a new fire to be able to share with you guys and also to really see, I mean, because this particular narcissist was a textbook narcissist down to the letter, like everything that everyone talks about from the love bombing stage, from the devaluation, from the discard, from the Hoover, everything to a T, exactly the cheating, everything was exactly textbook. And I think that there's a purpose for that. And I believe that I don't want to waste it. Because I see it, I know what it is, and I'm able to talk about it from a perspective of non-attachment. So I'm very detached, and it was very easy for me to heal and detach from it. And of course, there's um, internal healing I have to do, but that's within myself. And that's something I'm going to be discussing as well. So all of this is going to be put to good use. For myself as well as for you my subscribers so it's all good it's all good in the hood I believe that all relationships that come into our lives help us to grow in one way or the other and this one is no different but what I discovered more than ever from this particular relationship was the level to which the narcissist is a fiend is an addict, is a complete um, taken over, completely taken over by the need for narcissistic supply. They need narcissistic supply in order to survive. It is breath for them. They need it like they need air. So, one person, even, you know, giving all their attention, even if they have one person, a primary supply, who's giving them all their attention, that is not enough. There is no amount of supply that is enough supply for the narcissist. Every waking hour of every day is spent getting narcissistic supply, lining up new sources, lining up primary supply, new primary supply sources for the future, grooming future sources of supply, grooming secondary sources of supply, grooming their harem of supply, their exes. They are constantly spinning plates of supply. I'm here to tell you, anyone else who's telling you this, I'm sure this is pretty much, uh, people are talking about it a lot. Well, I'm telling you, it is real. It's like um, a junkie. It's like a heroin addict. Someone who constantly needs attention, affirmation, and the value and the pain, the sadistic pain of others. They wake up in the morning, they're looking for narcissistic supply. And in between the times when they're low on supply, because that perfect supply is hard to come by, it's very tentative. It's very, it's, it's like mercury. It slips through their fingers. No one can offer them the perfect mirroring that they need. So in between those times, they're going to be addicted to something, just like, Quinn says at Associates Direct, you are exactly right. They are addicted, 
alcohol is a big pull because it's easy to go get vodka, alcohol, drinking. Drinking can subside their, their heavy need for supply, but just like they need vodka, just like they need alcohol, they need people. They need attention and they need to hurt people because that's what makes them feel alive. Why? It's because they've been given over to depravity. They've been given over. They have um, something they have done or something in their past or something in their generational curses or something somewhere in their upbringing has caused them to be given over to depravity. And there's really no help for them because they're unable to see because they quickly pull out of their, they go in and out of delusion. So they go into delusions of grandeur where they think, oh, I'm great. I'm the greatest thing in the world. And then they go down and sink to the depths of despair where they become depleted and they need help and they need attention and they need someone to tell them that they are okay. And then once that person, you know, blows the balloon and fills them up with, you know, you're okay. You're, I'm, I appreciate you. You know, everything's okay. Then once they get blown up, then they, they, they basically just disregard the person that has been there for them because they don't have empathy or a conscience. So these people are just stuck in this never ending Sisyphean cycle. This sis, look that up, look that up on um, the internet. Sisyphean cycle where they're constantly rolling this rock up a hill and then the rock comes back and squishes them. And then they roll it back up the hill and then they, to the outsider, we can't see what's going on because they're very good at image management because that's how they get their supply. So they manage their image in order to get supply from others. That's how they hurt others. They hurt others through their image. Others that have wounds that are also narcissistically wounded. Those are perfect prey for these depraved people who are out to seep pain from others. And the interesting thing is, Oh, it's just, these people will actually attract and draw to them people that are like them. And that's where you get the flying monkeys and other people who are also interested in harming others and using image to destroy other people and make other people feel less than. So they are, they recruit other people in their depravity and it causes this just if if you open your eyes and see what's going on you will see that you are the winner in this situation you win because this person is a fiend and um at first glance it may look like wow this person is winning this person has left me and i am worthless he left me for someone who was younger or someone who was richer or someone who was totally different from me or someone who was this, that, or the other. And it can cause someone who doesn't have a healthy mindset or, or wisdom and knowledge about this stuff, it could cause you to doubt yourself. But the truth is, is that you're the one who gets to go forward because no matter what we're going forward, the universe has your back. We're, we're rising to the top. If you're an empath, if you do good by others, if you're growing, if you're working on yourself, you're going to the top. And these people are going to stay where they are. And they're never, you can't talk to them and get them to understand because they can never see who they are because their, their illness, their their grandiosity, their arrogance will never allow them to see 
the truth of who they are. Fiends. Literal fiends. Fiending for the hearts of others. And by hearts, I mean they want broken hearts. Because if, if you're broken over them, that gives them such supply. And that's why they know it too, because they will never let you see them sweat. They will never let you know that they are hurting. But believe me, they're hurting. They're hurting, but they're not hurting for the reasons that really matter to us as humans, as normal people. They're hurting for reasons that only pertain to themselves. And if you went over to help them and they're hurt, then they would only spit in your face at the end of the day. So it's not something you want to tango with. It's just something you want to stay away from. And it's just an addiction. But it's not an addiction that can be healed. Like alcoholism, we have AA. But we don't have Narcissist Anonymous. They need it. And I'm sure that with in-depth therapy, a narcissist could be healed. Um, But it would take a lot of work that their own psychosis, their own problem will keep them from developing. So I really don't have time to worry about their problem because, you know what, I have enough problems of my own. And one of them is keeping my life narcissist free and keeping myself away from people who are addicted to my attention. Because I don't have any time (laughs) to be throwing my attention away. My attention is precious and I'm going to save it for people who care about me and who have something to offer back because that is being a good steward of my goody. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening, everyone. It's been a great chat. I will talk to you soon. Please like, subscribe, and share.